So it's been 13 years since John Guastafaro last gave us a book, which back in 2010 was One Degree. I feel like it kind of put John on the map, for me at least. I wasn't familiar with his work before then. It was and is an awesome book, and I've actually reviewed it here on the channel if you haven't had a chance to check it out. John is primarily known for his card work, and so this new book is also a book of card tricks, and it is called The Nth degree. But before we get into whether or not the nth degree, his new book, is a good fit for you, there are several things that we need to talk about. The first thing right up front is that this book is being put out by Vanishing Inc. If you're new to the channel and you haven't watched very many videos, then I'm going to tell you right now, I work for Vanishing Inc. And so my view on this book may not be entirely unbiased. I'm certainly going to try to present you with the facts as I see them, and I will give you my opinions about what I think, but I want you to be aware that I do work for the people who have put this book out. But with that out of the way, let me tell you a little bit about this book, and I don't want this to come across as product placement as much as just giving you some of the facts that will help you make a good decision. It is a hardback book, which I always like. It is gorgeous in this slipcover, which was designed by John Guastafaro himself, and we'll come back to him in a second, talk about how he's really, truly a Renaissance man. Inside of the tastefully designed slipcover, you also find an elegant blue hardback cloth bound and silver inlay design. The book is a little bit shy of 160 pages. It does have a matching blue bookmark that will help you keep track of your progress as you read through this book. There are seven chapters with either three or four tricks in each, and most of the tricks are loosely aligned around some kind of theme. There are also six essays, which John writes about things that are not specifically magic tricks, but that are intended to help you elevate your magic or shape your brand or even help you as a person. We'll come back and talk about some of the tricks and what you might find and what you can expect and what kind of skill level you'll need in just a second. I want to talk briefly about John Guastafaro. By day, John is the executive director of the Hyundai Genesis Foundation, a charitable organization, and he has a really long background in marketing and brands, charity work, he's been a TEDx speaker, he's an accomplished guitar player, and has written his own songs and albums. But one thing that's clear is that John G. loves magic. He lives out in California, so he has an opportunity to perform at the Magic Castle quite a bit and is very involved in that. So most of the material that we're going to see here in his book, he's actually put it through his paces, not only at the Magic Castle, but performing in all kinds of situations, everywhere from his speeches that he gives, he incorporates some magic, he likes to perform for people in his office and around. He's putting all of himself into his magic and encouraging you to do the same thing, which I think is important. Let's talk about what the magic is and what you're getting and what you'll need to make some of this magic happen. But before we do that, let me tell you about the sponsor of this week's episode, Don's Magic and Books. My friend Don Bursell, who runs Don's Magic and Books, is a certified book lover. And I think one of the coolest things that he does is he helps books to find a new home, a new library where they can be incorporated into someone's magic study. So what does that mean? That means that he sells both new and used books. So Don's Magic and Books is the kind of place you go to shop when you're looking for something special or rare, or even the latest and greatest like Nth Degree. Check out his shop via the link down in the description below, and when you do, you're going to see all kinds of books, and what you'll notice is that they all are fantastic deals. Even though Don is selling some of these books that could be marked up to extremely high prices, his prices are so reasonable you won't have to think twice about ordering from him. And he offers fast and free shipping if you meet minimum thresholds and live in the United States. Definitely check out Don's Magic and Books if you are in the market for a new or used book. Tell him I sent you and enjoy shopping with Don this week. So what are you getting in Nth Degree? You're getting 26 different card routines, and I already mentioned the six different essays. I'm not gonna be able to go through all of the tricks, but I wanna bring your attention to a few things that mattered to me. One is, where can you perform this material? Some of you might be wondering whether this is seated at a table, or if it's close up only, or is it stage or parlor? Well, there's a little bit of something for everyone in here. Most of this material is designed to be performed as you would expect with a pack of playing cards, as close up. But as you read through it, you'll see that John has adapted many of these tricks to perform for much larger venues and audiences where he finds himself performing. 
So I would say that it's adaptable. In fact, he has a discussion in here about somebody using one of his tricks on TV, and he himself will perform it either walk around or on a stage. If you've seen something like his Vino Aces, which is pretty well known in the magic community, and I have a lot of friends who perform it, you kind of get the idea of what I'm talking about. Certainly it will play for an intimate group, but if you wanted to dress this up and make it a bigger piece, it would be no problem to include it in a parlor set. The other question that I see a lot of magicians ask when it comes to a book like this is what kind of skill level will you need to perform this material? And I'm going to say that it's solidly intermediate. If you are just now beginning your journey into card magic, it's okay for you to acquire this book. Uh, I think you could learn some of these tricks. It'll just be a little slower going for you initially while you learn some of the basic slights. He does teach pretty much everything you need to know to do the tricks. So that's not really the issue here. But he will expect you to be able to perform different counts. You'll have to be able to force a card. You'll need to be able to perform a half pass for some of the routines. Certainly there are controls and displays, and occasionally he'll have a trick that uses a cop or a palm. This is nothing knuckle-busting, so don't think of it that way. But if you're just now getting started, this would make a great next step type of book. So what about the kinds of magic? What types of tricks is he teaching? As I said before, I'm not going to be able to go through all 26 tricks. There's just too much there. But some of the flavors of what you'll get, you'll get routines that are a triumph style routine or blackjack demonstrations. In fact, there was a really cool one that is completely self-working for the most part, and you're able to predict with a dollar bill that your participant will land on blackjack. Of course, there are tricks where you'll find your participants' cards in really interesting and novel ways. There are tricks that use perception, where you're changing a packet of jacks into a packet of aces using a card that read one way says jacks and read the other way says aces. There are color-changing deck routines, there are sandwich routines, there are mental flavor effects where you're divining cards that people are thinking about, and even a routine that kind of reminds me of Smoke by Darren Brown, where your participant signs a card and you give them a little mini wand kit that you've made up for them and they wave it over the deck and it turns out that that card that they waved over the deck is their signed card. It gives you some idea, hopefully, of the kind of magic. I think that it's all commercial, very playful. It has some great plots and presentations that John's come up with. He has so many rich experiences in life, and he's sharing those with you so that you can benefit from his experience in performing all of this magic for other people. So what's the layout like? The layout of the book, you have black and white photos throughout the book, and all of the photos are numbered with labels in the text so that as you're reading through, you can figure out exactly what you need to be doing and when you need to be doing it. But the write-ups are also the order that we've all come to know and love. You have the effect where he's giving you the perspective from the audience. What are they seeing and what's the magic that's happening? The setup, so how do you need to get ready to perform this trick or prepare to perform this trick? followed by the bulk of the right of the method and presentation all mingled together so that you can learn to do things in the order that you need to. And it's followed by notes and credits, which I actually thought was really cool. Always have been a big fan of the way John G. writes up his notes and credits. There are bullet points that explain where his original idea came from, the sources of maybe history, the earliest record of this style of trick or this prop or this item. It's a great way to help you dive off of that into your own library. Real quickly here, what kinds of things will you need to perform this? There aren't a lot of gaffes. Most of this can be done with just regular decks of cards, and if you have different colors of decks, then you're going to be ready to perform all of this. Although, you will need a few gaffes to perform everything. So, for example, you'll need uh, cards with blank backs on them. You might need an Omni deck. You'll need to get some poker chips. Or you might need some roughing spray or something like that. So it's probably stuff that I mentioned earlier, an intermediate magician likely already has laying around. And there's enough in here that I don't think you're going to be disappointed that you didn't have everything you needed to perform it. Let's talk about the price and the value proposition. The price is $60. It's... I think becoming very quickly the norm in the magic book industry, and I think that it feels like a very fair price. Whenever I think about this material, the word that kind of comes to mind is elegance. I think that John has a very elegant personality. He's a gentleman and a scholar, and as I mentioned, kind of just a general renaissance man. And so when you read this magic, I think if you envision yourself the same way as wanting to be a fun storyteller and interacting with your participants, getting them to laugh and see 
big magic happening in a close space, then this is the type of book that will appeal to you. And for the price, I think you're getting a lot of really solid workable effects that I could see myself doing and not only that, enjoying performing for an audience. It's suitable for the friends and family type performances or like John, if you want to do some of this stuff at your workplace, I think presenting this kind of material is going to build your reputation up. And in fact, he's after the nth degree, which is ultimate degree that you could take something. The first book was one degree and he focused on changing things just one degree to make them slightly better. And he continues that focus in this book, but says he wants to take things to the nth degree. And I think that in many ways he has found just that with most of these routines. Going back for a second to one degree versus the nth degree, one degree was 20 different tricks and five essays and the nth degree is 26 tricks and six essays. So you do get a little bit more in nth degree. So if you don't know John G's material, I'll let the record speak for itself. One degree became one of the best sellers for Vanishing Ink of all time, was translated into multiple languages and sold around the world. It sold out of a print run and is now back in print. So if you want to check out his material and I recommend you do, then I might suggest that you start with the nth degree and if you like what you read, and I'm pretty confident you will, go backwards and get one degree. And between the two of those, you're going to have a lot of fun performing some excellent card magic, unlike a lot of the other stuff that you probably have. If you like elegant and great card material, then why not check out this review that I did here? As always, my friends, thank you for watching. And until next time, keep reading.